Hey everybody, welcome back to the OSG Garage. Today is part two of the folding trailer build. So if you remember last week, I kind of took you through a few steps into how I came up with the design and basically settled on the size and the functionality of everything I wanted for my trailer build. Drew it up in uh, Fusion 360, used kind of a hybrid plan of the Kendon and the Harbor Freight folding trailer. And basically where that brings us to is this, cutting steel. So I made a nice stock list and a little plan layout here for what I needed to catch. So one of the cool things about cutting this stuff is we're gonna use a technology today or a blade by Diablo called the Steel Demon. Steel Demon is a carbide tooth blade and it's actually cermet coated carbide that basically cuts through 1 8 inch tubing like it was wood. It's amazing how well this thing works. Now you can see online there's a lot of different types of cold saws and things you can use, but this thing produces no heat, cuts through like a knife through butter, and you can get these blades pretty much in a chop saw if you wanted to. But for me in my shop, I basically got one for my circular saw. Now, using a speed square, I can get this thing pretty square to and, and accurate to the cuts that I need. So we're gonna So, usually you can lay things down on a relatively flat piece of concrete and get everything squared up and, and put your tacks in and double check and you should be fine. But this is, uh, I really don't have a lot of good concrete here. There's some cracks and things are a little bit messed up. But what I do have is this CertiFlat weld table. Now, you're going to say that this thing isn't very big and you're right, but I should be able to get the corners of it up here using these little fixture uh, pucks here to make sure that everything is square tack the corners in place and maybe get two or three of the side pieces together at a time, then bring everything down and put the last couple connections together and I should be able to get that pretty square and flat. But first, definitely have to clean off the welding table. So we've got pretty much the ends chamfered on the one where we're going to put most of the bead. We're going to butt up to this face here. So we've got that good and cleaned off as well. And the end is chamfered. So now we're going to set it up on the table and get our first tack welds in place. All right, so I've got a few tacks in there now. And now what I'm going to do to be, uh, so this doesn't warp so much, I'm going to start putting bead, about a half a bead down here on this side, and then about a half a bead down here on this side, a little bit on the top, come back on the other side and alternate so this thing doesn't want to be pulled around.
also with this sort of flat table here, it really makes it easy to get everything square by using these little setup pins here. Now you can also make production fixtures with this as well too if you want. We're not doing any production welding, but for this it works really nice. So I pop this one up against these two pins here, uh, square this one up so when I push against it I know that I've got this nice and tight and square here. Then I loosen up this clamp and I can move this back and forth till I get the distance I need from the ends here. And that's what I did. Now these clamps are the uh, kind of cheapo Harbor Freight clamps. And I cut the second jaw off down here and used, a, I believe it's a 5 8 bolt that fits inside of those studs right there. And when you tip it back a little bit, it binds it up and you can kind of picture this thing down wherever you want. Works really well. And the best thing about it is it makes it really easy to keep things nice and square. Pretty good. Works out really, really nice. All right, let's tack it in. Now, the fun part is going to be getting this to get that end cap piece on right there. Let me change. So, so this one actually is going to kind of uh, hang over a little bit and the reason it's going to do that is because I'm going to make some uh, some allotment there for the for the tie down for the tie down uh, for the for the dirt bike trailer so we're going to get this thing square on these two setup pieces first and then push this piece in to get it to the right position and then we'll adjust the size this way. That was good. Now we're going to adjust for the sizes that we need here. So, so the inside pieces should be 56. That brings us 58, so that's 60 inches wide. So I need this piece here is a little bit over six feet. It's exactly six feet. So I need this piece here to be six inches. So we loosen this a little bit and kind of slide it down until we get it to be where we want it. We're going to put that back down, check twice. One double check we can do on this too is to see how parallel these things are. This should be a little over 31 inches. Man. Yeah, that's not even not even a sixteenth of an inch off over that whole length, so I'll take that all day.
All right, so that's pretty much the system I'm gonna to use to finish it up. I'm gonna start in this corner here, get that lined up, just put a tack probably right here in this edge so I'm still able to kind of move it off a square if I have to get these things to be flush to each other like this, tack it in, and then move to that other corner over there and do that one. All right, I gotta clean this one up because I didn't clean it up before on the bench. So that's it. Everything's nice and square. It's within an eighth of an inch from one side to the other side on the triangle. Parallel, square, flat. Worked out just great. It really helped to do some of the first welds on each side on this little table. Even though it's small, it's only two by three feet, you're able to get the major parts squared up. So when you put it down on the ground, you really only have to get the corners and one middle piece put together. Thanks Certiflat, Flat for the welding table. This is one of the best investments I've had for my tiny little shop. And you can still do some relatively big projects as you guys can see. So this part's done. I've got to do some finished welding, flip the sides over that I didn't get on the other side. And I've got the other side done over here. So once I get the stuff done, uh, the finished welds on this past the tacks, I'm gonna go ahead, put the two together and I'll show you the, the tabs I have for how the thing swings up. So I wanna show everybody something here about some brackets that I had laser cut. There's a place up in uh, online that I found called OSH Cut and they use lasers um, and they can get stuff cut for you real quick, you know, five to 10 days. You submit the forms online, you send a DFX file and they literally give you a quote filling out the stuff on the website. It works out real, real good. So, they gave me these things, and uh, basically, I got four of these. Four brackets like this that are going to go help mount the uh, trailer tongue to the front. And then four brackets for the hinge brackets. These things cost me a hundred bucks plus shipping. That's it. Quarter inch steel, cut to size, plus or minus a few thousands. I bet you they're plus or minus five thousands. I can't literally get the quarter inch plate, and my time isn't worth it to try and make all this stuff up. Now you put all the radiuses in you want, you put the hole sizes in you want, tell them the type of material, they got a full range of materials from stainless to steels to hot rolled steels to carbon steel, whatever it is you want, and they just make this stuff up. It was a great time saver for me. So the reason I have this step in here is because of the way the hinges kind of work on to each other. The idea is I tack I weld these two plates on the outside of these guys here and then they're able to swing up. And the offsets of everything that I have here for these plates is basically the same as what we're seeing right here. So that works out pretty good. So I've got one of these little thrust washers here, bronze thrust washer here in the middle to kind of bush everything out. This bolt isn't going to be the ultimate bolt. Ultimately, what I'll do is get some shoulder bolts. So it, it uh, has a half inch shoulder bolt, which will be the way to go on this thing.
All right, everybody. So I think for tonight, all we're gonna do is put a couple tacks in here. I don't have the right washers and spacers I need to make this right. So until I get the final bolts and everything, I don't wanna finish weld this plate in. But what I'm gonna do is just leave it about right there, just see if like two or three tack welds will hold it in place. And then uh, we'll be able to at least fold this thing over and see how it goes. Okay. So, with just four tacks in place, you guys ready? Oh, ho, ho, ho. Look at that. Yeah, the folding part is done. So guys, I think we're gonna leave it here today for uh, all the stuff we've done on the trailer. We got the hinges working, we got the hinges up and mounted, the uh, folding part works, no problem. So uh, the hinge, the axles and tires and everything should be coming in the next couple days. And I've also got parts for the uh, tongue. I got the ball coming for that. So I think we're just gonna leave it here for part two. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, hit like, hit subscribe if you're already not. Remember, you can look us up on Instagram at OSG underscore garage. And we also have a Facebook page at OSG Garage. See you guys next week. Talk to you later.